In dark and bloom the walls have ears, the flowers and the gardens have eyes, they turn their heads this way and that so nothing escapes them, and the grass has whiskers that register every step. People here always sense things. Curtains flutter as if fanned by quiet breathing, in and out, a vital element of life. Whenever God looks into these houses from above, as if they had no roofs, when he peeps into the doll's houses of his model town, he constructed with the devil to be a warning to us all, in almost every house he sees people standing at the window, behind their curtains, peering out. Sometimes, often, there are two, even three in the same house, standing at windows in different rooms, hidden from one another. One wishes on God's behalf that he could only see into houses, not into hearts. I always think that um, you as a writer do not pick the subject, but the subject finds you. As it was in this case, um, the historical uh, facts about uh, this um, war crime in, in a town called Re Rechnitz, at the, close at the Austrian-Hungarian border, is quite well known in Austria. So, and it is also worked on. There are uh, documentaries, movies, and even a theater play by Elfriede Jelinek, the Nobel Prize winner. So I was not intending to write a novel on this war crime, but from a certain moment on when I kind of dug into the, into the subject and the, and the history again, it was so fascinating to me the way how people would continue their lives after such a horrible thing has happened in a very small society that where everybody knows each other, uh, where uh, people know exactly on which side the other was standing during the war, during the Nazi times. So um, it kind of obsessed me and I couldn't stop researching. And the more I researched, the more some kind of structure evolved in my head. So I just had to write this novel. It was a, a force bigger than me. I'm often asked uh, why there is this particular sense of humor or I would rather call it a dark wit in my, in my texts. Um, I think it's the only way I can write. Um, I always have to... This, it's, it's, some, it's some distance that you, you can distance yourself from the horrible subject um, by going one step behind and see it from a greater distance and also see the you know this typical human behavior that is in itself strange or funny or can be described in a sarcastic way I think it helps the reader um, dealing with with these with these horrible things with the with the horror uh, of a mass crime of this brutality of these cruelties um, it's just, it's not, a, it's not a decision. I just can do it, I only can do it this way. The difference between writing a novel and, and doing historical research is that the novel gives you much more freedom. Um, you can uh, basically crawl into the heads of the protagonists, of the characters, and, and figure out wh what, what drives them, what, uh, what, is the, what are the motives behind their acts and actions. Um, you can even try to understand why they would behave in a horrible way. For example, I think my book is full of, of full of average characters. They're not very bright or intellectual. They're just ordinary people uh, fighting for their survival in these horrible times. And they have their particular motives to, to act as they do. For example, one is just, some have fears, others are greedy, others have a bad conscience, but, and, and at some point they kind of make it over this wall of the bad conscience and act in a decent way all of a sudden. So um, this, is, this is what only literature can do or, or art can do to, to to, to make these characters alive uh, while journalism or history has 
to stick with the facts and cannot interpret the actions of the people. And this is what I think triggers me and triggers us when we are writing fiction, that we can, that we can watch a particular action from very different perspectives. When you describe such things as happened then back in in 45 or in the summer of 89, you as a writer of nowadays, you always reflect in a way um, how people would act today or what the differences are when they acted back then. Um, so I think literature always tries to give an example that is how do you say this in English? It's over the times. It's 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 forever. It's it's eternal. It's it, there, there are some eternal uh, examples inside literature. The story plays in this or that century and this or that past. But if it makes you, if it if it is interesting to you from from your nowadays point of view then there is always something that links you up with these times. And I think this is some of the magic. The older I get, the, 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 it, it, the, the more it gets a mystery to me how I became what I am. Um, when I think about me when I was young, I was a very shy person, but I think I was always determined. And um, this, this sense of outspokenness that people link up with me is just, I think it's some kind of it has some kind of family uh, roots, uh, as you know um, that my father was a refugee as a child and he had to emigrate to he was basically sent to the United Kingdom at the age of eight years and uh, he was not allowed to speak German in the UK on the streets because during war times it was dangerous. When he came back, he rather did not. Uh, talk about his past as a refugee child because everybody wanted to you know forget in these uh, these uh, years right after the war so he was a very shy he was a very he was not shy but he was very restricted to himself he, he did not he did not make a fuss about his particular life story and my brother and I were completely the opposite. We, we used to speak out as soon as we were able to publish, as soon as we were accepted as writers. Um, I think we are making up at some point for what happened to our father. And as I told you already, um, I think for me it's also a kind of a test. How long do they allow me <laughs> to speak out? Or is there any limitations to freedom of opinion nowadays or to political point of views. Um, in Germany there is quite a discussion on, on different subjects that I'm every now and then taking part and this is still in my mind. Is it still safe to do so? And I, I always persuade me that I should keep on going with just saying what I really think. To be really... It's, it means such a lot to me to, to be authentic. I don't. I don't pick fights just for the for the joy of the of the discussion, but I want to make my point when I think that some perspectives are missing in a discussion. This is what drives me. When I'm speaking out and taking part in discussions, that I always hope that I'm speaking out as a citizen, uh, as a part of our democracy, of our mutual democracy. But of course. I have uh, to, to have the stage and the f and the and the possibility to speak out is because I wrote some books that people liked. Um, so it is kind of linked, I think. Um, and and this is also what makes me think that I should not that I should be careful about it because um, the readers that like my books, there's other people than the people I'm in discussions with. Um, so I, I, I feel some sort of um, obligation to be careful with what I'm doing. But on the other hand, when I think it's necessary, then I do it. I think that the danger always comes from sides we didn't expect it to come from. So, for example, when uh, leftist movements get so ideological that you cannot 
talk to the proponents any longer in a reasonable way. Or things like digitalization, that we greet it and celebrate it as something really great and that will link up everybody with everybody in the world and that makes so many things easier and faster and makes knowledge accessible and all these advantages. But at the same time, I would really state now that uh, digitalization, or at least this part that we call social media, has destroyed also a quite a bit of uh, the communication or the way people deal with each other, the, the habits that, that the habits have deteriorated. Um, I really think that we did not see that coming, but we have to confront these problems nowadays. And I do sense a danger that these things together are kind of undermining democracy. Um, for example, when you think ab about how it is possible nowadays to, to, to kind of uh, fuck up uh, uh, the, the public opinion by fake news and by mani manipula manipulation uh, via the internet, um, that you cannot always believe what you're seeing, also the problem of IA. Um, I really think that we are in a that we're living in dangerous times, not, not only because of climate change, but also because our technology might be eating us up. I think the, the, the greatest danger is this illusion that we can make clear uh, differentiation, that we can figure out what is black and what is white, and what is right and what is wrong. Um, and the, the better our instruments get, uh, the less generous we become. And this is, I think, the most dangerous thing about it, that we cannot forgive anymore, that we cannot just let things through, you know, ignore things, uh, just say, okay, this is a stupid person, let him talk. No, we have to engage in a shitstorm against this person. Um, in former times, we would have just turned our backs towards these people. Or we just have, I think, ignorance and generosity are elements of forgiveness in a way, or or of of consolation inside democracy. And this illusion of being online and being informed and being able to take part in every discussion and having to take a stance here and there and. This is just uh, really destroying some kind of that we would in an old fashioned way call humanity. And um, I think we should really distance ourselves from these digital structures that really drive us crazy. This is an interesting question if art can help uh, understand these, these uh, developments because as we see nowadays, art is the, uh, the, the goal of discussion. There's a lot of, is this allowed or should this be prohibited in the arts? Should we cover up naked woman, women? That, was the, that were the problems that were discussed by the feminists in the 70s. And in the 70s they said, no, we should not cover up naked women, we should also show naked men. Nowadays it's the other way around. So, and this is also something that, um, is frightening me, scaring me that art nowadays is such a aim of correctness that we are talking about now today in the newspaper because it's the 90th birthday of Roman Polanski yesterday. So in this birthday article in Süddeutsche Zeitung, they were discussing again, should we see, should, should we watch movies by Polanski because he, what is the difference between the personal uh, life of the artist and his art. And so we are trying to, to, to moralize the art for the artist. Or, and this is very old thinking, but it has come again as if it was totally new. And therefore art itself is a danger right now, because it's not common sense any longer that art is allowed to do anything.
So, um, and as soon as art is attacked as in itself, we, we see how great the problem is that we as a society are facing, I'd say.